All right, so you can see the work above there. Um, see how number five and six, they're already the answer, or there's parts in parentheses already, meaning they've already been factored. I don't need to do anything else except set each part equal to zero for the zero product property, which is a way I can solve this func or these equations. But if I look at number seven and eight, notice how they're not in parentheses yet, right? I just have the one we're called polynomial expression set equal to zero. So the way that we actually begin to solve this is we need to find its factors, meaning we need to break it into separate pieces. And the way we can do that is with a technique called factoring, uh, and I usually call it x-factoring is what I say, uh, because it's a trinomial, and so that means I can apply it here if it's quadratic or in quadratic form, which this one is, which is a times c on top, which is 1 times 14 on the bottom, is b, or 9, and the two numbers that will multiply to give me 14, add to give me 9, are 7 and 2. And I tell my students to be aware of this, if a is positive 1, meaning the coefficient in front of the squared term, we can actually go from straight from the x factor to my answers, which would be k plus 7, k plus 2. And I got those two numbers directly from my x factor, try out the 7 goes here, the 2 goes there. Again, it doesn't really matter what order it goes in, as long as they're um, in there. All right, so I already have I already have my factors, because I was able to use the x-factor chart and then put them in two separate pieces. Now I can set each piece equal to 0. So k plus 7 equals 0, k plus 2 equals 0, and that would give me an answer of k equals negative 7, and k equals negative 2. That was my two answers for number 7. So for number 8, Again, taking a look at this, uh, it's a trinomial and it's quadratic because the highest exponent is squared. Let's go ahead and x factor this. So 1 times negative 56 is negative 56. On the bottom goes negative 1. And I believe negative 8 and positive 7 will fit the bill for that one. And notice how the invisible 1 coefficient in front of x squared, that means we can go straight to x minus 8 x plus 7 equals 0. Set each piece equal to 0, so x minus 8 equals 0, x plus 7 equals 0, and then add 8, x equals 8, subtract 7, x equals negative 7. Alright, so in order to solve by factoring, we actually have to do the x factor, x because it's a uh, it's a trinomial that's a quadratic, and then we can use this technique here. So there are other different methods. Obviously, I'm being really specific in saying it has to be a trinomial, has to be quadratic, because this is one technique. If there are, there are other ways to solve polynomials, this just happens to be the one we're learning now, and so I wanted to use a specific language to let you know. We use x-factor to get the factors, then solve each piece by setting it equal to zero.